An Afrobarometer survey conducted in September this year has revealed 57% of Ghanaians want government to be able to stop media publications it deems harmful to society. The survey is also set to show a sharp drop in support for media freedom from 55% in 2005 to 36% in 2017. Although most Ghanaians indicated they rely on radio and television for information, they still think their activities need some form of regulation. Speaking at the Stakeholder Engagement on Support for Media Freedom in Ghana, Dean of the School of Information and Communication Studies at the University of Ghana, Professor Audrey Gajapo, said the survey must be a wake-up call for the media to have introspection into their works to win back the public trusts. It's useful for us to begin to ask ourselves why. Why is it that a majority of Ghanaians want to see media freedoms curtailed? Is it because the media is unethical or they consider the media as and ethical and they are no longer tolerant or is it because they are complacent about media freedoms because they take it for granted after all 67 percent of the people said that um, in Ghana we enjoy media freedom so they've come to take it for granted or is it because they're tired of the content of media which tends to be very politicized in a partisan way MPP versus NDC or is it because they also know that politicians have captured the media such that a majority of media organizations belong to political operatives, not parties necessarily, but people aligned to political parties and, and, and perhaps driving a particular political agenda. And so people have become skeptical of the media. Um, some of the findings also point to the media's own behaviors. For example, there's a finding on corruption and the fact that people think that the media is corrupt. And so there, there are lots of reasons why I imagine um, we get results like this. I think it's worrying. For me, I think it's worrying, particularly because um, you can do a trend analysis. You can, you can look at it diachronically. There have been seven um, surveys, as the data shows, and this is the lowest, and it's like a huge dip. I think that the last survey in 2014, I believe, uh, showed 55%. More people believe that media freedom should not be curtailed. Now it's 36%. You know, so it's it's quite a dip, and 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 I think that it gives us um, reason to pause and perhaps have robust discussions on two fronts. For the media, we must be having discussions about how can we restore public trust in the media. For the public, how can you sort of not be complacent? about what the media means in a democracy and not to take for granted and not to trust that you know you will still be enjoying the quality of democracy you have if media freedoms are curtailed. Meanwhile, Executive Director for the Ghana Center for Democratic Development, Professor Kwesi Premper, believes the outcome of the survey may have been influenced by politicians owning media houses in the country and the lack of appreciation of press freedom by young Ghanaians interviewed. At learning that the public also has a majority of Ghanaians trust the media. So it's not a really a, a trust question, right? The majority of Ghanaians trust the media more than they trust government and yet are willing to live with more regulation. So it's something that is intrinsic to the media. The real issue is there's something about Ghanaian media that is causing the public to, as it were, become more tolerant of media. I have suggested, for example, that one possible reason might be that, well, 25 years into the Fourth Republic, most of the people who constitute uh, the sample for Afrobarometer are young Ghanaians. Uh, they, they have only known media freedom. They did not know the era before media freedom and therefore probably uh, can afford to, to risk 
what it is that we have. So that's one possibility, that the only thing they know is media freedom. They have never known the days of one broadcasting house that was owned by the government. They've always known uh, these various media outlets uh, that we have today. So they can afford the luxury of asking for more regulation. But at a deeper level too, it may well be that you know, there's something about media behavior that is causing this. We've explored many, many possibilities. Um, there's definitely the media is not free of blame uh, in this space. Uh, so you could see the media as not just, you could see this issue not as about just media freedom, but it's about media license. The media is actually just has awesome power and uh, maybe abusing it sometimes. Uh, there's that aspect of it. And there's also the fact that many of us may be frustrated with what appears to be a partisan capture of media space. Well, let's have some more uh, on this and let's get to understand what went into this. Uh, joining me in studio for a conversation is Afro Barometer Communication Coordinator Anglo. Anglophone West Africa, CDD Ghana, Josephine apianya uh, Good morning to you. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Okay. Thanks for having me. First of all, can we understand the number of people who participated in this survey? So it was a nationally representative survey. We had a sample size of 2,400 respondents. And so that gives us a confidence, of in, a confidence, in, a confidence interval of 95% and the margin of error of plus or minus 2%. Mm. So we always ensure that our surveys are nationally representative. So with most of the country, every country that we work with, we work with the National Statistical Service in the country, and so they give us the proportions of the, the populations in the various regions, the male, female, rural, urban, proportions and order and we ensure so that this is balanced yes it's balanced mm. yeah. all right uh, so what, what were some of the specific questions that you put out to people? so with the media freedom we asked we wanted first of all to know the level of media freedom that we had in Ghana and so the question we asked was whether they think the media now has more freedom or the same level of freedom or less freedom than it did to criticize or investigate governments compared to a few years back. And then we have 62% of Ghanaians saying that the media has somewhat or much more freedom than it did to investigate the government than the, a few years back. Mm. We had 25%, that's like a quarter saying the level of freedom is just as, the same as it used to be. And then 9% saying that we have less freedom than we used to have, the media used to have. And then we also asked the first choice question where they were supposed to choose from two statements which ones they agreed or disagreed with. And mm -hmm. the first one was whether the media should have the right to publish any ideas or content without government interference. Mm. And that is where the puzzle is because even though we are saying that a lot the media has a lot more freedom than we used to which had just 36 percent saying that the media should be free to publish any content mm. without government interference instead the other statement was whether government should be able to control or prevent publications that it deems harmful to society mm. and we had 57 percent agreeing or strongly agreeing with that fact that government should have the right. Which is really high. Yes, which is really high. And this is a total reversal of Ghanaian's attitude towards media freedom. If you compare it to our four previous rounds of surveys from mm. 2002 to 2014, where consistently we've had at least 55%, that means that consistently we had a majority of Ghanaians endorsing media freedom. But then you find out that in 2017, it just dropped dramatically mm. rather to 36 percent and that is still a puzzle we are trying to figure out why. Mm. But it wasn't just about media freedom, there were other things related to media. Yes, yeah, so there was also the issue of trust in information from sources and we realized that uh, about six, six in ten Ghanaians say they trust information first from public media sources 
And then they also trust information from government sources. We have about 58% saying that. And then from private media sources, we had about 57%. So a majority of Ghanaians trust information from media sources as compared to about 43% who said they trust information from social media, which mm -hmm. is not too surprising mm -hmm. coming with the issue of um, fake, fake news, news and mm -hmm. international misinformation and all that. But then there's another puzzle. So when we look at the figures of corruption and if we add those who are saying some people are corrupt to those who are saying a lot or most are corrupt, then we have the private and media, um, the private and public media personnel being in like the 70 percentage so that we have about 70 percent of Ghanaians saying that at least mm -hmm. some of the media personnel are corrupt even though that if you look at only the figures for those who are saying a lot or most are corrupt then we have the media personnel at the bottom okay so those who are saying a lot or most of media personnel are corrupt are just about 17 percent mm. for private and public as compared to like the 59 percent who are saying that the police are corrupt mm -hmm. are compared in fact to all the other institutions including the, the judges yes traditional leaders elected leaders the media is doing way better they so we can say they're the least corrupt yes when you look at a lot or most but then when we add the sum it pushes us more like further to the 60s 70s so a lot more them. people think that most media people are corrupt no a few people mm -hmm. think that most or a lot of the media personnel are corrupt but a lot more people think that at least some are corrupt so there are people who think there's corruption in the media yes okay um, was this one of the questions in terms of corruption in the media uh, was it part of the previous surveys? Yeah, from um, 2002 to no. 2014. So we've done a lot of corruption. Um, we, we've asked a lot of questions about corruption, but the bit about corruption in the media was only added, and it was just for Ghana mm. in 2017. So we are unable to do the trend analysis. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And and, and, I, and I think that I said in my intro that this was done this year. It was actually in 2017. Yes, mm. 2017. Also, back to the issue of support for media freedom, we compared Ghana to 20 other countries. And we noticed that, so the 21 country average was 47%, as in the proportion of those who are saying the media should be free to publish any content without government interference. Mm. That was 47%, the average. But Ghana is well below the average. So we are about 11 percentage points below the average. We're like 36%. And so. What, what does the, that mean? What does that mean exactly? So from the bottom, we are mm. like fourth from the bottom. Oof. Like the number of people who support media freedom in Ghana compared to 20 other countries, we're fourth from the bottom. Does the survey also, or did it look at? what we should be doing, what no. we should work on. So one thing about Afrobarometer is that we do not ask all the qualitative questions. We just do the mm. quantitative opinion surveys. And then we sort of share the findings with policy makers, practitioners like you. So yesterday, you were at the stakeholder engagement. You know, we had regulators, mm -hmm. practitioners, and the academia. We all came together to discuss why this alarming dip and it's it's a puzzle for all of us mm. i remember one of the media guys sent me a text that he actually came to find answers but he it looks like he left more confused mm. one other issue is that so we did a disaggregation of the the responses according to age rural urban location gender wealth level of education and you can see that those who are calling for government control, it, it cuts across all these sectors. There isn't much difference. So we have so you cannot, over... So for instance, you can't say that these are uneducated people? No, people it's who everywhere. Don't the so the aid, the, those, in, the elderly and then the, the, young, the youth have the same ideas. Male and female respondents mm. had the same ideas. The wealthy, so when it comes to the wealthy, those with low lived poverty, they were slightly more in support of this um, 
control, government control. Okay. But even with that, the difference was really modest. So you have well over 50% of people across all these demo social demographic um, social demographies mm. all asking for some sort of government control and that is pretty alarming especially since we know the role media f freedom plays mm -hmm. when it comes to like democracy and mm. all that so. mm. i guess that's why uh, 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 professor Pempe, you know says for instance that it's also because maybe the the the, the young people don't understand where we've come from yeah, and but that's, that's the thing. It's where it's we are not, coming from. That's like, why so like I said, that. it's not just with the youth, mm. it's with the elderly as well. Mm. It's not just with the poor, it's with the rich. It's not just with those in the rural areas. Those in the urban areas are also calling for control. Mm. So it cuts across all the sectors. What kind of response, what kind of effects are you hoping that this survey would, would do? How well, should we respond to it? It's, it's, I think it's something that we should take seriously, especially for advocates of media freedom to take seriously. Also, I think we should get, because really if this is based on the issue of ethics, then we could have governments just basing on that and start stifling media freedom mm. in the bid to sort of like ensure some sort of tranquility and all that and that will not be good for our democracy we look out for this support and demand for media freedom because it's one of the factors that we use to measure the extent of democracy in every country that's why these questions are there and we all know the importance of the press the free press mm. to ensuring accountable governance ensuring democracy fighting against corruption and all that so it's really something, if it's an issue of ethics, then we're calling on the regulators and even the practitioners to start doing their homework and do something about it. But also I think we need to educate the, we need to educate the, the public about the importance of media freedom. Mm. So they, they probably, like Professor um, Prempe okay. said, they probably enjoyed the freedom so much that they have no pause for a second to think what's the lack of freedom mm. or what the government's control would actually do to the country. Absolutely. But there's also talk about um, newspaper consumption. And I think the survey looked at that as well. Yes, actually. So we looked at um, news consumption and then we realized that consistently since 2002, radio has been a major source of news consumption for everyone. But we also realized that consistently the consumption, the newspaper readership keeps declining mm. steadily, while the consumption of news or new media, that is the internet and social media, keeps increasing since um, 2012. It's increasing in its importance mm. as a news source. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, and this is also coming at a time when we, 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 we've been pushing for the RTI to be passed in Parliament. So I guess it would get the conversation going. Thank okay. you so much for your time, Josephine. Thanks for having me. All right. Uh, stay with us. You're watching News Desk. Still a lot more to come.